This is day seven. All right, so we continue our bad word series. And so last week we talked about sin. And this week we're going to talk about transgression is the bad word of the night. But before we get into transgression, I thought we'd start with just some of the tools that you might use when you're doing Hebrew language mm. study. And um, so one of them that I brought, I know we, we've talked about a few different tools, um, but this one I brought, it's a Hebrew concordance of the Bible. And uh, it's not that I'd recommend just this specific book, but what I want to point out is it says it's coded with Strong's concordance numbers. Does anybody know what the Strong's? The Strong? Strong's? Uh -huh. have, has no. anybody ever yeah. seen Strong? I mean, we use Bibles? concordance. Uh -huh. or not. Yeah. Austin? I think I've read parts of, or flipped through parts of Strong's. Yeah. Is it a guy? So there's a, you see, you might see some others. Up. Is there anything that says up? On our wall of books here. Yeah. Strong, strong, that red one on top. Strong's Guide to the New Bible. Yep. Okay. And you'll see on certain Bible translations, you might see on the cover, it says, with, code it with Strong's. Or it says code Strong's. Strong. <laughs> or like NRSV <laughs> Strong's. Oh. And what Strong's is, Strong's is a number system that's been connected with all of the Hebrew words. Oh. And so what they did was they took the Hebrew words, um, Dr. James Strong gave them all a number, and oh, so that you uh, <laughs> could, and that's why it's called Strong's Concordance. It's named after heard of James that. Strong. Um, it was published in the 18, in 1890 is when this was published. So it's an old system, fairly old system. I mean, young in the, yeah. my, like, in comparison with biblical scholarship, but <laughs> old in, as far as books go. Um, so we've got, um, and James Strong was an American biblical scholar. Hmm. Um, so I've got, this book has, it uses the Englishman's Hebrew concordance of the Old Testament, which means it's using a specific translation, um, mm. but it's using Strong's numbers. Oh. And so this is what it looks like on the inside. Hmm. I'll show here. Mm -hmm. I think it's like reading tax law. So yeah. yeah, so you can see, and I'll pass this around. <laughs> and then you'd have to. So you've got the Hebrew word yeah. and you've got the number and yeah. then it has all the verses where that word shows up. Oh, okay. That's what that whole book is? That's, huh. that's all this book I've is. I've never seen It that. has a word and then. It has a Do word. Do use that or no? Probably. If you heard of a book of scholarship. written in well, Hebrew, right? I took a whole. So parts in Hebrew. So you've got the top Bible words classes. in Hebrew. We and then the other parts are all in English. A biblical concordance. No, I don't think. So his number is this four digit number? I don't think. So that four yeah. digit number is the that's number. Julian. This is his number that yeah. he came up with. Never heard Yes. So that's his How associated. high does it go? Yeah. Like. <laughs> Well, is it, what, does what, it start with eight, one? Is it like no. 8,000? Oh, okay. Yeah, 8,000. Yeah, there's 7,000, yeah. I think it goes up around 8,000. Wow. I'm sure I could get that. Amazing. Wow. So but that was a tough class. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> we didn't have to remember them. <laughs> so you'd use these strong concordance numbers. So like um, one of the words we're looking at tonight would be um pasha is the noun pasha pasha <laughs> like that. for transgression in pasha pasha so there's pasha in pasha um pasha is the verb i the a we used to say that i don't know it's something i learned you mean like, like go pasha. 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 oh yeah, we, yeah pasha. that's the same is that it is the that common the expression are we that saying the, that yeah that's pretty why cool. did we say it though how in what context did you say it? you'd just be like like poppycock or something. yeah like oh. yeah Pasha. yeah we said it too who started it i don't know did it come and from the neighbor is it a bad word transgression it's like you're contradicting so well, yeah they're, they're so, saying yeah. something you said okay so Pasha. we have yeah this, that's right so we've got this number what number is it? it's um six thousand five hundred eighty eight or six thousand five hundred okay, why did they skip six. over eighty eight 6,588 so is the verb? 
and that means step and it's only used once in the bible which is why it's not in here. oh okay okay <laughs> But the for which one is the verb? The verb is the pasha with the a p a s h a. So they're just so that would be like pronunciation. Oh, pasha. Sure. <laughs> To add the extra Hebrew flair. Oh. <laughs> and how do they pronounce a G? <laughs> or is that the English G? I think it's the English oh. pronunciation guide. So as a noun, it's spelled differently, you said? Yes. That's so then -E. the um actually the verb is the root, and then it has a slightly different form as a noun. And so the verb is with the A, oh, and then the oh. noun is P E S H A. So we have in Strong's concordance, we've got um, you've got the Hebrew word, and mm -hmm. then you have the pronunciation right next to it, and then you'll have what part of speech is being used usually, and and then because parts of speech that changes. So if you were to go to a Hebrew Bible and just look at it, um, you may not find Peshaw just written by itself because Hebrew also puts on. Um, prefixes and suffixes that change the word and that changes the part of speech it changes what it's referring to mm, um, okay so it's a little harder than just like going and finding the, that exact word uh, just because of that hmm. um, but it, so it sh tells us all the places where this word is showing up in the bible and where and what word it's being translated as in this particular translation that they're using for the english portion um, these words are mostly being translated as transgressed or rebelled or revolt are the main words for the Shah and Tisha uh, would be so transgression, rebellion, or revolt. So, so all, the, all the Jewish rebellions were then were Pasha. Uh not all, oh. but <laughs> not all. <laughs> so, so let's um I thought what we could do is just dive in and pick some random ones from the concordance mm -hmm. and notice what we can learn and then also try to notice together what we can't learn by using a tool like this. Mm -hmm. Because that's an important thing to know. Um, every translation tool has its limits and its advantages, which is why it's helpful to use multiple translation tools. Sure. And so That's um, true. using this one, um, just pay attention to what we can learn and what we can't learn. So I, I don't know, Hannah, you want to pick the first one? So we've got, we can either pick from six, 6,568, 86 or 88, either one. Any of these verses? Any of them. Pick one. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Pick one. Let's do the bell and so two kings. Second kings. Second kings, yes. One one or three five. All right, let's do one one to start. One one. Second, Second Kings. Kings. Second Kings. Verse one, one one. Chapter one, verse one. Oops. One, one, Second Kings. Second Kings. Verse one. Chapter one. Yeah, yeah they're really. It's like, why is he talking about clothes? <laughs> Wrong Kings. Rebel. Pasha. All right. Kind of a, somebody want to read it? Go ahead, Hanny. After Ahab's death, Moab rebelled against Israel. Moab pashad against Israel. Pashad against Israel. The verb. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, they left the first. All right. So we've got 
rebelled after the death of Moab rebelled against this back. What is um, to rebel against? In this case, what do we have? What's happening here? The rising up. Uh, rising up against. What type of like rebellion against what? What type of parties well, are involved? Governments, authorities. Yeah, yeah. there's nations. These are different communities of people that are rebelling Moab. against. Yeah. So we have in, so the rebellion, this Basha can happen between nations then. Mm -hmm. And okay. Israel was split in two during that. Yeah. I was yeah. just reading my. I think so. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I was notes. reading my footnotes. Nice. I yeah. have footnotes there. Footnotes are helpful. Rebellion. Or when nations rebel against split. nations. Has each other issues. Okay. All right. So we got that. We did rebel. rebel. There's okay. a lot of transgressions. Oh my goodness. I was trying to find the rebel. Are any ones from this from line or this line? Okay. Okay. Proverbs 10 12. Proverbs 10 12. Proverbs 10 12. Proverbs 10, 12. <laughs> this, I'm glad you picked this one. This one's an interesting one. It uses it differently. Yes, it does. You want to read yours? What does yours say? Sure. All right. Mine is different than what is in here, but so, okay. Uh, 10, 12. Proverbs 10, 12, hatred stirs up quarrels, but love makes up for all offenses. Mine is hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Mm -hmm. So the word is offenses. So offenses here. We're wrong. So Mine is being, wrongs. Or wrongs, yep. Is it, oh, it's the wrongs? So yours is being translated as wrongs. Mm -hmm. How's yours translated? Mine uh, covers up all wrongs. Covers all wrongs, okay. And what does yours says? It's like a noun. Covers all wrongs. Wrongs. Okay, so we've got wrongs or offenses that is being translated as. And here it says in the concord, well, the Englishman's translation. In the Englishman's translation, it says, love covereth all sins. Sin. So it's, it's hmm. instead of offenses or wrongs, it's sins. We did sins last. Yeah. <laughs> Transgression. Too many words with the same meaning. Okay. So here, which what is it referring to? Sin kind of thing. Wrongdoing by a person, okay. an individual. Well, Possible. Oh, wrong. Hatred stirs up strife. Proverbs is hard because there's not a lot of context either. Yeah. It's, it's just like a, a hated act, but somehow love comes yeah. in. I don't know. So if we walk back a little bit, whoever winks the eye causes trouble, but one who rebukes boldly makes peace. Um, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. On the lips of one who has understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of one who lacks sense. Well, my caning stick is appropriate for the back of a fool. Yeah, oh, and don't wink. It's a strong line. Because <laughs> you'll cause trouble. A sly wink. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, mine's just as any old. <laughs> okay, a sly wink. <laughs> That's fine. What does it mean to cover up a transgression? That hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses, all wrongdoing. Oh, what love. does that mean? Yeah. Love. I'm thinking like love is forgiveness that, you know, if you're doing it, some wrongdoing and you're just like, you know what, I'm just going to take the higher road. I'm going to not let that bug me. I'm just going to forgive right now. Somebody told me we're, we're balcony people, not basement people. Take the high. Mm. <clears throat> I think it sounds like love as a stronger power. Mm -hmm. If it can okay. cover all like, the wrong, but it covers it up, it doesn't make it right. It just right. It doesn't re yeah. It kind of doesn't blank, rescind blank it. It just it turns it up. Like turns the other cheek and yeah. Turns a blind eye. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It sounds like it's kind of supposed to be positive, but none of the other second lines are positive, so maybe not. Are you guys hearing us, oh, Carol and Brittany? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. You're thinking hard. Because it sounds good. Love covers all the odds, but no, maybe not. That, that's a really interesting point, Hannah. That so we have well, I had kind of noticed in this structure. So, well, right before it though, we have the one the eye winking eye causing trouble and then the one who rebukes boldly makes peace so that's a positive in the second line for 10 mine for ten. says foolish prattle brings ruin for 10 a under... sly wink causes grief foolish prattle brings ruin mine is but the one who rebukes boldly <laughs> makes peace that's very no, different no. that is very different <laughs> okay where, where, where are you at now this is a 10, 10. verse 10 verse 10, 10. 10. Yeah, yeah, ours is, mine is malicious. the same as, as Anna. Is he who winks maliciously maliciously causes grief, and a chattering fool comes to ruin. Mine is really weird. Oh, interesting. People who wink at wrong at wrong cause trouble, but a bold reproof promotes peace. Oh, yours is more like gross. Yeah, yours is more positive. Mine sounds negative. All of mine are negative on the second line, mostly. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's a long chapter. It is interesting. Yeah, if sometimes I, vote, I get translated so differently. When okay. I wrote to eight, I also have the chattering fool comes to ruin. <laughs> on eight, too? Yeah, it's the second. The well, mine's line. a babbling fool is ruined already. <laughs> on, on eight? Yeah, so kind of similar. A babbling fool. Prattling, babbling. <laughs> so, Gretchen, was, was Solomon supposed to be giving good advice here or just like really bad advice? <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of think mine's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you, it would be interesting how these all originally were translated. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, because it, okay. yeah, when we were looking in the concordance, it's interesting. But that's an aside, I guess. Yes, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. So then we've got 11, though. The mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Which sounds bad. that sounds bad. Yeah. It, oh, Gretchen, mine's the same as yours. Okay. Oh, okay. Mine says hate stirs up trouble, but love forgives all offenses. Hmm. Intelligent right. people talk sense, but stupid people need to be punished. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. So this is why it's different in ten ten. So in ten ten, yours probably has a footnote on it. No, too. I don't yours have a lot of footnotes in this one. No. Um, mine has a translation. Um, so uh, oh. it's a difference. <laughs> What's what we're noticing here is there's a difference in translation oh. because one of it's being translated from no, a source and one's being translated from the Septuagint. Oh, from the. And so one's in being uh, translated from Hebrew and one's being translated from Greek. Uh, so the um, one of them has that a babbling fool will come to ruin mm -hmm. is what's in, in Hebrew. Like that, yeah. But in Greek, that line in the Septuagint has the one who rebukes boldly makes peace. Huh. Mm. Yeah. Which is an interesting, like, that's, yeah. that's pretty different. It is quite different. <laughs> like where I want to use the word wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. Who's right, who's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Or, well, yeah. So the Greek in the Greek translation, it could, been, old it could have been a translation error that somebody like yeah. skipped mm. to the wrong line or mm. they're using different sources. Yeah. So um, it's really difficult to know what, what was the actual original they liked one. liked it better. Uh, yeah, they like subjectivity it when translating. They were doodling sure the happened. lines, and <laughs> this is what came out. I don't, yeah, <laughs> anything. But, huh. but this, so the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. The, those people have that in the yeah, way. the mouth of the wicked masks violence. Okay, yeah. and then we have 12. Similar, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. 
It still sounds positive to me. Like love is stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting though that we have the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Yeah. So we have concealing being a negative thing mm -hmm. in 11 and then oh, concealing being a positive thing in 12. Is it the same word in yours? I don't know if oh. it's the same word. It has better. masks and covers. I don't know, maybe. You'd have to look in Hebrew. Of course, we also know they can have many meanings. Right. That's a confusing one. So what else would be a question then about transgression? Um, if you cover up transgression, what happens to the transgression? Still there. Okay. Well, if you cover it up like um, deep, covering it, but you're not getting rid of it. <laughs> if you cover it up with love, perhaps you're making amends or something. Well, under the law, if you if you you could say you ask for forgiveness, or, yeah, but you still the law still you have to pay. Yeah, you might we, still have to have to have a sentence. But even though the person forgives you, you still have. In this law, yeah, yeah. I was thinking like David. You know, he knew he did wrong. Yeah. He said, "I'm sorry," but he still had to live with the consequences. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, yeah. Lived, he, he a lot of still lived yeah. with the consequences, yeah. even though it it love. Yes, love. Covered. Love was poured over it covered it like we say God, God God more it. Jesus concealed, concealed it yeah but the dealing oh. yeah, David's yeah. whole family just had so many problems they yeah. really did <laughs> just because love is covering the transgression doesn't mean it erases it no right. no you can still live in love yes but, still, it, but still it's make mistakes but better than <laughs> hatred I guess yeah yeah I mean, they're making it's it's an it's an opposite. That's what these are. This. So, welcome, Louise. Hi, Louise. We're talking about transgression. Oh. So it it feels like it has to be positive to me. But... So the word cover, um, I looked it up in the interlinear, and it is the same in both lines. Mm. So in Hebrew, conceals and covers is the same Hebrew word. Mm. Mm. It's the but there, but it's got to be an opposite somehow. Let's go into another one. John, do you have Okay, how about uh, Jeremiah 5 6? Jeremiah five, five, six. Five, six. Okay. Come on. Wow. I like the <laughs> wildlife imagery. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. There is a lot. Have you ever? So there's a Bible called the Green Bible. And, um, you know, have you heard of the red letter Bible? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it's Jesus' yeah. words in red. Mm -hmm. So there's a, it's called the green Bible and it's a green letter Bible. Yeah. And they put in green all of the imagery for nature in oh. the Bible and everything that has. Never heard of that one. It, it makes it really interesting. That would make it and interesting. And you can really see. Oh, like tons of Because actually <laughs> the Bible is bookmarked by trees. You have the tree of life on both ends of the Bible. Hmm. And there's these nature elements woven all throughout. Hmm. Because the existence creation and the way we relate with creation sure. is an essential part of our covenant hmm. with God. So it's really a fascinating thing to look at. A lot of people skip over there in Genesis that there, forgot the sad wording, but all the trees, all the fruit of all the trees, and we give, I give that to you to eat and not and yes, it says that we have stewardship over the animals, but it doesn't say we should eat them in right. that passage. 
Yeah. So the Abrahamic covenant, which is the covenant in Genesis um, at the creation, is is a vegetarian covenant. Yeah. But <laughs> you can eat all of the plants in the trees, and, and you will coexist co coexist with the animals. Yeah. But it's at the um, but later, the later at Noah's the covenant with Noah, mm. where the the animals are given. I mean, Exodus they have fifty million rules about it how to right cook it and stuff so, yeah clearly something changes but huh. it is it's really fascinating <laughs> huh it, um i never thought about that you can pick and choose so yeah. so people I'm say vegetarian. i want to go back to the garden of eden ask <laughs> yeah. them if they're vegetarian i'm doing the eden diet <laughs> are you vegan <laughs> or yeah or if you're um wait vegan um i'm doing or it. if you're uh what's Excellent. the what's the one with all the fat and all the grease Atkins. Or keto. or keto. If oh. you're keto, you can be no way. Right? Yeah. <laughs> exodotic. I'm on the no way. I'm taking the all meat pizza on exodotic. <laughs> my mother in law says, I'll have the vegetarian sandwich with double bacon. Oh. <laughs> with double bacon. <laughs> Plant bacon? So oh. Let's read this one. Okay. Therefore, a lion from the forest mm. shall kill them. Mm. A wolf from the desert shall destroy them. Mm. A leopard is watching against their cities. Everyone who goes out of them shall be torn into pieces because their transgressions are many. Their apostasies are great. What are your last two lines? Transgressions are many. Okay. Their apostasies are great. Oh. What's apostasy? Apostasy. Obviously. Trans I have, for their rebellion is great and their backslidings many. Yeah, beyond oh, numbers, backsliding. which I like better. There's a new one. Their backsliding is beyond numbers. <laughs> I have because their sins are numerous and time after time they have turned from God. Oh. What do you have? What was the last one? Speak up, Brian. I've got um, because their sins are many uh, and time after time they have turned from God. Yeah, backsliding. Mm. Oh, so that's, that's more of a sin instead of a transgression his mm -hmm. version yeah. and another form was when somebody had sins well you had sins didn't you well mm -hmm. there's i have sins yep. yeah. sins in the last one i wrote it oh i see what you mean sins are many back therefore a lion will tense and then this one it's rebellion in mind and rip apart anyone who ventures not exactly calm nature i find it interesting as the Mm -hmm. naturalists that yeah they have wolves in the desert at then well <laughs> yeah uh, they're not in no. tundras and a lion from the forest. bush a wolf from the plains hmm. a leopard from nowhere mine doesn't say <laughs> my line came from the forest oh okay <clears throat> the leopard lurks near the towns though Leopard when he lurks mm -hmm. in the village, prowls in the villages. Oh. Same thing. Pasha. <laughs> I always like that word. <laughs> and the other words, not um, that, like the backsliding. Yeah. It's not the same as the word that we were looking at last week for sins. It's yeah, a, it's different a one. different word. So in this one, it's sins. I kind of missed. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so transgressions. Their transgressions are many. Or sins. So or mind. sins. Okay. That is the word that we're looking yeah. at. Yeah, okay. Week. So what's going on here with transgressions? <clears throat> Push off. Push off. Ah. Let's see. People are sinning by going against God. Is it more complicated than that? How are they sin sinning? <laughs> Let's see. Wonder. Children abandoned you. Ooh. They were lusty. They like stallions, neighing after one another in desire. Oh my. That's a fine stallions. I like it. It doesn't say stallions oh, and mares. That's a mine. Well, fat, lusty, lusty stallions, stallions and mares. Mine does say stallions and mares. Oh. What's his right in mine? Mine is equal. equal. 
Which which bris are you looking at now? That's eight. It goes Number down. eight. Well, well what is yours? Lusty stallions. And mares. They're well-fed, lusty stallions, <laughs> each like paying how, for his neighbor's like wife. Mine adds wow. the mares. Okay. So a lot of equal and everything. <laughs> okay. Neighing after one of them. Uh, greediness. Uh, there's in four. It says they do not know the way of the Lord, the law of their God. Yeah. So not following God. But no they all like had truth. broken the yoke. They had burst. The yeah. Yeah. So there's this brokenness that's happening. Mm -hmm. Something about breaking the laws. Yeah. So they need to be ripped apart. Well, the ripping apart is not the important part that we're looking at tonight. I know. The... <laughs> but, but the ripping apart because of the Pasha. <laughs> okay. That's the reason. <laughs> Should we met... look at another? Metaphorical. Awesome. Sure. Do you want to pick one? We'll do sure. another one here. Yeah, I just have a like, kind of quick question. I'm yeah. Little... When was it? 22. 22. There's a cow can. They said the waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They, oh, I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. Mm -hmm. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. Yet yeah, we have typhoons and. Um, Where is that? Yes, yeah, uh, Jeremiah 22. 5. Oh, and 5. Oh, I like 5. But we have tidal waves and. typhoons that but even when they die down like so it's we're in jeremiah and this is within um this is a poet like a poetry yeah. and usually the rules of poetry only work as far as the metaphor <laughs> and then they become broken <laughs> the metaphors can only be pulled so far okay so but yeah that's an interesting piece for it that I place the sand as a boundary for the sea, a perpetual boundary that it cannot pass. So this, this again would be that parallelism that Brian was talking about. So the waves toss, they cannot prevail. Again, deepening that to the word they cannot, or they cannot pass over it. But even, so when it is um, crossed after a hurricane or a typhoon, you have sand again though. Does it ever, it never continuously crosses it? No. I suppose not. Which is interesting. Hmm. Maybe it should be like that because here we have the people who are transgressing, transgressing. Although the boundary has been set, still they keep crossing it, even mm. though it is not to be passed. Mm. Still in his past. Oh, they roar. Huh. That line in the sand gets washed away by the water that yeah. laps on the sand. Yeah. Uh, I like that, that the, um, the image of. So this poem hmm. set up, setting up this sand as a boundary. But as you pointed out, it gets broken. Like that yeah. boundary is broken. Hmm. And um, that sounds like that's the deeper piece within this poem, too. Mm -hmm. Let's do, we'll do one more and then we'll talk more about transgression. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've got a um, Bible project video, too. So where do you want me to? Any, any of those you from pick. five or six, 6,588 or 86? Oh. Louise, we're looking at the Strong's Concordance. Mm -hmm. um, the Strong's numbers are numbers that are associated with the Hebrew words um, by Dr. Okay. James Strong in 1890. Are you familiar with Strong's Concordance? No. You probably have one at No. Nope. Probably have one, but not here. <laughs> yeah. 
they have a whole library, right? Right. Come back and pick out some more books. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to update the library with some more. Mm. Louise's husband was a pastor. Mm. He's a lawyer. Where at? And a lawyer. Oh. <laughs> I got you confused. You serve churches too. A legal pastor. Yeah, he He's did. a lawyer and you serve churches. Um, Oh, You've always liked to talk oh, most about it. the churches. In it was the thing was still. There. <laughs> oh, that's right. What's what happening? What do you think? Austin? Find one. We're still at Ezekiel twenty-one twenty-four. Ezekiel twenty-one twenty-four. Mm. 21 24. Mm -hmm. It looks like you did. Hmm. Somebody like to read it? Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says Because you people have brought to mind your guilt by your open rebellion, revealing your sins. And all that you do, because you have done this, you have been taken captive. Which one is it? 21, 24 in Ezekiel. The chapter 21, verse 24. Mm -hmm. What's before that? What is 23 down here? Uh, 23 is, but to them, it will seem like a false divination. They have sworn solemn vows, oh. but he brings their guilt to remembrance, bringing about their capture. You don't have 24? Well, I... Mine sounds different. You're mortal. Oh, that was 23. 24 in mine says, therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have brought your guilt to remembrance in that your transgressions are uncovered. So that in all your deeds, your sins appear, because you have come to remembrance, you shall be taken in hand. Which is right before the poem, as for you, vile and after for the wicked poem, prince. 33 am I? My 24 is about making signposts. <coughs> no. What's your say? So. Sort of steer down, maybe on 33 or something further up, maybe. Oh, is it over here? A sword? That's okay. Oh, it's in the middle of that. Mine must be. Um, it's got to be some other, some other version or something. Oh, okay. Revealing your sins, this one? 29? Yeah, that okay. one. Must be taking some other. Who knows? That's, Ooh, okay. that's weird, but. Oh. I'm gonna have to remember that because sometimes we read from here. Yeah, well, I've never noticed. I've never once this. noticed that before. So we have a lot going on in this one, Ezekiel um, twenty-one, We've got transgressions. Yeah, we've here. got guilt. We've had sins. Your verse, uh, your version about divinations is in my 29 too. It's in 29? Yeah. Despite false visions concerning my divinations about you, I'll be laying the next to the wicked who are to be slain. Whose day has come, whose time of punishment has reached its climax. Oh, yeah. Mine's in 29 too. Oh. But I, there's also a thing about false divination in 23. Oh. What does your 23 say? Same thing? Me? Yeah. yeah. It, was him, it will seem like a false omen to those who have sworn allegiance to him. Yeah. But he will remind them of their guilt and take them captive. Okay. The mind's doing divination for omen. So we have a 
couple words in here. We're um, this is a good one for us to end on because we have um, iniquity in here as well. And earlier on, and then we get trans the word that's translated um, that that's being uncovered hmm. in that your transgressions are uncovered. That's the oh. um, Bisha word. The the uncovering, the revealing, uh, the transgression. Exposed? Oh, that the word transgressions oh, or, or sins. sins. It's sins, not rebellion. Yep, and mine says rebellion. Oh, I do have rebellion. Or rebellion. Whatever it is that is being uncovered. Oh, that's a sin. That is what is. Well, so mine says revealing your sins. Being uncovered. So sins. I think it's the sins. Mine the sins. says the same thing, yeah. Yep. You will be captured. And is a false omen also something that. False omen. So. Um, that is all. So we've got divination and omens and things. Mm. And so we have a mix of different types of practices too. Mm. So mm. some some ancient religions would use divination and, yeah. um, and sometimes true. the Bible speaks about against it. But then there's also times where the Bible's like, throw your lots and see what happens, like have what the lots tell you, which is a type of divination. And they that is used sometimes too, and so it's a little mixed as far as how it's being discussed. But so that's why they're really clear when they say this is false divination. Um, okay, that it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's that? Um, Wong called that people. Is, Oh, the divination rod where they got the two ends and they look at yeah. the water. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Oh, can you say divining rod? Yeah. Oh, oh that's what I've heard. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Who used that in the Bible? What Bible story? Somebody used that? I thought so. To find water. water? We have Moses like hitting a rock with water and water. That might be it. Yeah. 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 That one works though. And then they're <laughs> partying in water. Are you saying those guys didn't work back in the, the, the dust bowl? I'll find you water. I need water. Hey, I I know someone who can wire witch and water witch. Really? Yeah. Wow. And just with a piece of wire. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've ever tried to like figure out if you're good or bad. <laughs> but anything that's Some under the ground, wire. and we we yeah. tested this with they like must twenty feel people. Something. Yeah. Well, okay, there was like twenty of us, and we all bent. So we made divining rods, mm -hmm. divination rods, and everybody held them. <laughs> What's going on? Everybody yeah. held them and walked over the area where the water line or electrical lines, yeah. anything that was under the ground. And one person consistently, it always just dropped down, pointed hmm. on me, nothing. Oh, I mean, the wind would blow and it maybe tip this way or that way, or I would, you know, yeah. whatever, drop it. Yeah. <laughs> but were, there was only one person out of like 20 people, all related, hmm. that could make the mm. rod. Interesting. It, and yeah. it's true, I know, because I saw it. We were in the farmyard, Carol, um, trying to figure out, you know, like, like where we're going to put down some deep poles to put a chute. Sure. And we, we didn't want to hit the water line that we knew was shallow and the electrical line that was underneath there. And, and there was no 911. Well, there was. <laughs> there but, was. But but nobody else put those lines down. We did, you know, so they weren't like, oh, we have a map. This is right. right. right and it was right. no fancy machine, you know, with mm -hmm. all this. It was just a person walking with two pieces of bent copper wire going, mm -hmm, and the wires would cross hmm. as soon hmm. as he would come. And the, we all kind of thought it was like a type of Meg magnetic magnetic yeah. that, yeah, some that people, some he's people probably have just such more a... grounded yeah. <laughs> no really he's probably more I'm grounded serious. to the ground yeah. and the stuff is coming up and then it the yeah circuits maybe coming up and, make well, other things going. and then don't yeah. you think some people's like heart rate and, and everything that's yeah going some people on. do weird things to watches yeah stuff. yeah yeah that, that you can't wear a watch it's something inside yeah yeah there's actually if you look in old cathedrals 
there's um if you look in the stonework some really old mm -hmm. cathedrals have like it's like a bowl carved out of the stone mm -hmm. and, and and it's about eye level and um it's called like a hum hole is what it's called and you go up to it and you put your head in it and you hum mm -hmm. and um, the purpose is that you hum and then it causes that hum to like re reverberate back to you oh. and because everybody's organs vibrate at a different like yeah. um speed oh, within okay. your body mm -hmm. and so the hum hole is this is in the old cathedrals hole. so you'd put mm -hmm. your head in and you'd hum until you found the pitch that your organs were vibrating at because mm -hmm. it's extremely calming you have that <laughs> same mm -hmm. and then you would be able to feel it from the tip of your toes to the tip of your head mm -hmm. that, that's when you know that you have the actual like right. There's a Same thing. guy mm -hmm. named Clint Ober. He had a long 20 plus year career in the telecommunications industry. Yeah. And he figured out that you can put a rod in the ground and then put a wire and then attach it, attach yourself to the wire. And, and those are all the electrons from the earth and that's supposed to help with inflammation and heart, heart disease and stuff. Huh. Oh, Life so you can do I walked with a woman from, from Beulah. Well, actually, she's from somewhere else. We walked the length of an old, basically abandoned cemetery up north of Hazen. And she had wires. And she we were looking for graves because all the graves were not, were not labeled anymore. And she would go along and I was following her to record it. This was a man, this is a woman, this is a child. We're at the whole length of this cemetery. And we went back to the museum and tried to confirm the names that were in that same cemetery. And it was pretty, pretty unreal. Hmm. But um, weird. And uh, if you want to believe it or not, I mean, she's, she's been called more than once to find people in, 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 grave sites like that but this was just we're just trying to map out this particular grave this particular cemetery hmm. so it was weird hmm. i'm gonna wrap this up i think today's class is called transgression transgressions with a like a side into divination supernatural <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but We've got this um, transgression and we've got a Bible project video that'll summarize it for us. But before we jump in there, um, some of the things that I want to point out that um, we heard was, so with transgression, um, we have that it was between these different parties mm -hmm. and there's a transgression. And so a Pasha is, it requires that there be trust or a relationship that's existing. Mm -hmm. And um, Pasha is when that trust or relationship is broken in some way. And so we see evidence of this throughout the Bible where covenants are being broken. Um, the trust and relationship with God and with one another is broken um, between people and mm -hmm. with God. And so it's this betrayal. It's also a misuse of a relationship. So if you're in a relationship and one party is taking advantage of another party, like that would be a push off too. That there's hmm. um, a misuse. That you're misusing the relationship in some way because you're breaking trust whenever you're misusing yeah. a relationship. But as we heard in the very first reading, it can be between nations. So it could be like a treaty, like a formal treaty being broken would also be a push off or a relationship being broken. Now, one thing to note is that you don't um, do this to someone, you do it with someone. And so when a relationship is being broken, um, this word actually understands in, in a, most places as um, it, it takes two. Like every P, when you're in a relationship, it takes all the parties involved to break that trust too. And so that's part of this word as well. And so it's with, not against. You would not push against something. You would push with, with something. them. Yeah. Almost sounds like victim blaming. 
<laughs> no, not as a victim blame. Not quite, but that's not a good issue. But, uh, yeah, not Like, not they're not culpable way. all the time, the other person, or the other entity. But if it's, it's so focused on the relationship piece. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if you think about in a relationship, um, two way it's usually a two-way break that happens. Hmm. But, you know, like you said, when misuse the relationship, I was thinking, you know, like, mm-hmm. okay, like, power no power mm, right and then how is that with but yeah i mean yeah. unless you mean with in a different sense like the other person's with them but they're not contributing but is there the sense the that the person who doesn't have the power the has actual power? agency oh well sometimes but not yeah. always what does yeah. that mean or claim well I, if you're a child yeah right yeah although sometimes there is an encouragement with um um not as a victim blaming at all but like in healing is claiming where your own power was and uh, yeah. Your own oh, yeah. Yeah. to, to and, reclaim it yeah. in yes in the the bible i think does try to help people reclaim their freedom mm-hmm. reclaim that, that was that, taken from you sometimes mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. you didn't freely give it right mm-hmm. but a break is not always not always freely given no no but no. but it's broken the relationship <laughs> so it's done with because it's, lost. it's affecting yeah. both parties mm-hmm. it's affecting both parties. Mm-hmm. if we so, use the word with that way yes yeah. because you would um covenants with god are being broken and so there's a transgression against god now does that mean god's done something or just that we've done something or is it always both parties that's done something or not done something oh. um, but still either way <laughs> wait this is getting way too <laughs> i gotta go either but this is very anyways, interesting I, anyways I, I think I have a layer so okay oh <laughs> for people have been held captive that psychologically latch on but by the term to the captors, mm. um, Stockholm syndrome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a misuse of relationship, but there's not really a break because the captive, captive person, loses their interest to leave. I guess. Mm-hmm. What you have to do if you're like four years old and kidnapped to mm-hmm. survive. Okay, that's good. But the, I gotta, yeah, but thanks the, for the good discussion. But the though. broken is still there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that would be an instance of covering transgression. Mm. And maybe why sometimes covering transgression is not always a good thing. If, mm-hmm. if in the, and sometimes it is because it allows new life too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then it's complicated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, let us, we're going to, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to watch this video from the Bible Project and then um, maybe it'll answer some of the questions and maybe it'll just form new ones. Either way is good. Most people assume the Bible has a lot to say about how messed up humans are, and that's true. It's also true that the Bible's vocabulary about this topic sounds odd to modern people, using words like sin, iniquity, or transgression. And so the Bible's perspective on the human condition is often ignored or treated as ancient and backwards. This is really unfortunate, because through these words, the biblical authors are offering us a deeply profound diagnosis of human nature. Iniquity refers to behavior that's crooked while sin refers to moral failure. And transgression, this is a fascinating word that you for sure haven't used in conversation recently. So let's focus on it for a few minutes. In Old Testament Hebrew, the noun is pesha and the verb is pasha. In the New Testament, the Greek word is paraptoma. They're usually translated as transgression, sometimes as rebellion, and in older translations as trespass. These words refer to ways that people violate the trust of others. Pesha describes the betrayal of a relationship, and since there are many kinds of relationships, a lot of different behaviors can be called Pesha. Like if two nations are in a relationship, we would call that a treaty, and Pesha would describe the breaking of that agreement. 
Like in the biblical book of 2 Kings, we read, after the death of King Ahab, Moab pashad with Israel. Now, this is usually translated, Moab rebelled against Israel. But in biblical Hebrew, you don't pasha against someone, you pasha with them. That is, you break trust with that person. The same idea appears in an Old Testament law about theft. If an Israelite is away on a trip and somebody sneaks into their house and steals something, that's robbery. But if the thief was your neighbor, it's Pesha because there's someone you should be able to trust. Or there's a story about Jacob running away from Laban, his uncle. Laban accuses Jacob of stealing some idol statues. He searches all of Jacob's belongings and he finds nothing. So Jacob shouts, what is my Pesha? How have I violated your trust? But the sad irony is that the statues were stolen by Jacob's wife, who is Laban's own daughter. Talk about breaking trust. So Pesha involves one person or group violating a relationship of trust with another. And this is a really common word in the Bible because it's one long story about a broken relationship between God and the Israelites. At Mount Sinai, they agreed to worship only their God and to care for the poor among them, but they didn't. And so God raised up prophets to confront them like Micah, who said, I'm full of power with the spirit of the Lord and with justice and courage, so I can declare to Jacob his Pesha. Or the prophet Amos. He I was just for a moment. Who said, I'm full of power with the spirit of the Lord and with justice and courage, so I can declare to Jacob his Pesha or the prophet Amos. He accused the Israelites of Pesha, specifically for idolatry and selling the poor for a pair of sandals. He also accused other nations like Tyre, who profited from capturing whole towns and then selling them into slavery, or the Ammonites for murdering the innocent to enlarge their borders. For Amos, the power with the spirit of the Lord and with justice and courage, so I can declare to Jacob his Pesha. Or the prophet Amos, he accused the Israelites of Pesha, specifically for idolatry and selling the poor for a pair of sandals. He also accused other nations like Tyre, who profited. We're stuck in a loop here. Specifically for idolatry and selling the poor for a pair of sandals. He also accused other nations like Tyre, who profited from capturing and selling the poor for a pair of sandals. He also accused other nations like Tyre, who profited from capturing whole towns and then selling them into slavery, or the Ammonites for murdering the innocent to enlarge their borders. For Amos, these are all acts of Pesha. They violate the universal trust that exists between all humans who are made in the image of God. He watched these leaders ignore or justify the mistreatment of humans in the name of national security or a strong economy. But for Amos, it was a betrayal of humanity. And it makes perfect sense why these prophets associate Pesha with words like treachery or falsehood. In the Greek New Testament, the Apostle Paul develops this portrait of humans as trust breakers using the word paraptoma. He recalls the story in Genesis about Adam, that means humanity in Hebrew. And in that story, humanity breaks trust with God and seizes authority to discern good and evil on their own terms. Paul calls this the paraptoma of Adam, humanity's violation of trust with God and with each other. And it leads to a complicated web of betrayed and broken relationships leading towards violence and death. But for Paul, that is not the last word. He says, if death came to all by the paraptoma of a human, how much more will God's gracious gift overflow to many by means of a human, Jesus the Messiah? Instead of letting humanity destroy itself in treachery, God raised up a human who would allow our Pasha to do its worst to him. Here Paul is drawing on the prophet Isaiah's portrait of the suffering servant, the one who would commit no violence or have any treachery on his lips, yet he would be counted among those Pasha, bearing their failures and interceding on their behalf. And this is the surprising story of the Bible, that God's response to humanity's Pasha and Paraptoma was to be trustworthy on our behalf. The apostles claim that in Jesus, God took responsibility for our betrayal so that he could open up a new future and a new way to be human, the way of faithfulness, trustworthiness, and integrity.
That's the kind of human that Jesus was and is, and it's the kind of humans he wants to create as he faithfully guides our world into the new creation. And that's the fascinating story behind our biblical words for transgression. The videos, um, I always put the video in the link, direct link to the video in, um, so, we can, so you yeah. can watch it. So you'll be able to see that. It's in, usually in the description for the recording for this. You can find that video. But otherwise, look up Transgression Bible Project. I know it skipped quite a bit on us tonight, unfortunately. Thoughts on Tasha or Tasha? Well, like your book said there, it's like it's used a lot of times. It's used a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. But I think reading through the Bible, I think of the transgressions, rebellions, and it's mentioned a lot of times. Yeah. Maybe because we did a lot. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There's I, a, a lot of the Bible is about promises that God makes and then how covenants are broken mm -hmm. and how those then are covered and new life is found too. And so and that's a continual thing just in human relationships as well. Intentional break in relationships and unintentional. So the purple paper. Mm -hmm. From Sunday. Mm -hmm. So acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. I took it more like with this, like like if something was promised mm -hmm. and it didn't happen the way it was supposed to, how do you recover from that? Mm -hmm. Or how do you ask for, instead of acts of kindness, more like acts of kindness that you give yourself to overcome? Yeah. I like that. That kind of made sense with what you just said. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Before we conclude tonight's class, question on what do you think is the limitations of using Strong's Concordance? They just get snippets. Yep, just snippets. Mm -hmm. And so we're reading it out of context. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we've got the Hebrew word, all the places it's used. Um, another thing we don't get from a concordance is we don't hear or learn about part like um, speech patterns or figurative language. That's not told in here. Um, or the way, the different types of ways that words could be used. We just see that the word's being used and that's it. And we don't have any of the cultural interpretation in a concordance either. So there can sometimes be false conclusions being drawn in between words because we think they're connected, but but really it's being used in different ways. So like in English, um, like you take the word just, was, was that just, or I just wanna do that. Those are very <laughs> different meanings. <laughs> but if we were reading it in a concordance and we didn't know English, then we might think, oh, these are really related to each other and draw an incorrect conclusion from that. So that's one thing to keep in mind whenever looking at things through a Hebrew language or Greek words whenever using the concordance is what there might be some cultural or um, figurative speech that's being used that we're not picking up on. Well, thanks for coming tonight. Mm -hmm. We'll have one more bad word next week, and then we'll continue on. We have three bad words in this series. <laughs> What's the bad word next week, Gretchen? The bad, the bad word next week is iniquity. Okay. Iniquity? Iniquity, yeah. So as you saw in the Bible Project video, they gave a summary. Sin, transgressions, and then we'll do iniquity mm -hmm. next week. So no, no homework um, and no divination.
That was just a side note. Divination was an aside. <laughs>